What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 172 of Category 5 Technology TV. Great to have you here. It is Tuesday, January 4th. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, hey. sir. Hey. We didn't bring any noisemakers or anything. We should we have thought not. of that. You got the champagne. We got though, the right? shirts, though. We have new uniforms. New uniforms? <laughs> John's very proud over there. He's like, I got the shirt, too. I got the shirt. Yes. John hey, is John. in uniform. Yes. There you go. What's that say? Pull a plug. There you go. Yeah, don't get him to stand up and twirl around. <laughs> <laughs> I know he wants to. Well, <laughs> you could. Nice to see you. I hope everybody had a great new year and uh, uh, big news for, uh, for Greg, who is engaged to be married now. Greg in our chat room, G Dog. Yeah. Congratulations. And you know what else? What? He quit smoking. He quit smoking? That was part of the prenup, I think. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? That's fantastic. Congratulations, man. We're very Greg. happy for you and proud of you on the, uh, on the smoking thing as well. Yes, indeed. Congratulations. All right, what do we got? Uh, uh, Hillary is joining us tonight. Hillary, how are you, my dear? Hey, everyone. I am fabulous, and oh, I definitely dig quiet. in the new shirts and the new website. It's pretty rad. Cheers, yeah. So what do you got coming up in the newsroom? Oh, I've got lots going on in the world of technology. So coming up in the newsroom, make sure you stay tuned to hear that Wikipedia has met its goal and raised $16 million. All right. iPhone alarms were hit by a surprise New Year glitch. IKEA stopped selling incandescent light bulbs in the U.S. stores. And lastly, Monday's meteor shower should bring something spectacular over Canada. So stick around for the latest news from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Thanks, Hillary. We've got uh, no lots going on in the sh on the show as well tonight. We've got uh, we're going to be taking a tour of the brand new Category 5.TV website that launched nice. perfectly at 11.01.01.01.11.01, our binary launch date. Like I said, there's a lot of geek floating around here. A lot of geek floating around. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Christmas came and went, and I said I'd bring on one of my geekiest uh, gifts that I got oh, okay. from my brother, and I and. <laughs> Oh, I'm very, man. I'm very proud of this. As a matter of fact, you know what's scaring me about this is you said one of the geekiest. One of this is one. Not of. the geekiest, this but the geekiest. one of the geekiest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a genuine article. Thinkgeek.com, Star Trek original Enterprise pizza cutter. Wow. I'm afraid to use it. I said to Becca, I'm like, uh, she washed it. I'm like, I don't want to use that. And she's like, well, what is it going to do? Just sit on display? I'm like, it's, yeah. It, it's already pretty cheesy. <laughs> oh, I, I'll stop. Oh, I'll stop. Eric. Actually, Think Geek's got a lot of great stuff. They got some great stuff. ThinkGeek.com, if you've never checked uh, that a out. A friend of ours do. has a guitar shirt. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we should bring him on to show the shirt sometime. Boy, oh, boy. It's that's a, a cool nice shirt. Too. They got some really cool devices. It's a great shirt. But hey, that's, that's a pretty great gift for, for me. Yes. So, yes. And I make pizza. So it works out really well. But that's going to take up a lot of room in your drawer. You know? It is. But I, that's why I said to Becca, I'm like, I'm not putting that in the drawer. It's got to be on display, baby. But you know what, actually? I have a few pizza cutters. That's way better. It's a really good pizza cutter. <laughs> that's the ironic okay. thing. It's like, oh, well. Okay. Got to use it. It's really good. I'll so, stop. What was your geekiest Christmas gift this year? And even if it wasn't a gift, even if it was just, okay, you were out shopping on the Boxing Day sales and you decided to pick up something for yourself, we'd love to hear about it. All right. Join us in the chat room, category5.tv. And of course, as you're there, check out the brand new website. We're very excited about this. And uh, you can launch the website through web chat right on the website on the interact uh, menu. Uh, or of course, you can join us on free node in the chat room, category5. Tonight, we're looking at a, uh, a website that allows you to sort all of your lists uh, alphabetically. Doesn't sound too fancy, but hey, it's going to come in handy, so stick around for that. Uh, also, Miro Internet TV. We're going to uh, take a look at uh, kind of where that software is at. We haven't taken a look at it in a long time, so we're going to be uh, checking that out. Miro Internet TV is a free open source software that allows you to watch shows like Category 5 TV uh, through your Mac, Windows, or Linux PC. So stick around for that. And we've got lots of questions, too. We so. do have some questions. Yeah. Here's a question right here. It's from Dennis Kelly. Hey, Dennis. Robbie, what are the real differences between KDE and GNOME? That almost came out of my nose. Well, wow. way to start out with a big one. 
That sounded like a small question, didn't it? You know, it's one of the shorter questions. One of the shorter questions with that answer that I can't possibly answer with my own opinion, because if I do, I risk alienating at least 30% of my audience. Uh, GNOME and KDE are Linux desktop environments, and each one has their pluses and negatives, and you can choose which one you want to use. But the nice thing about Linux is that you don't have to choose entirely. You could have both installed. So you could install Ubuntu and then install Kubuntu Desktop, and you'd have the best of both worlds. You could use both. But uh, essentially, there, there are some big differences between KDE and GNOME, but I couldn't even begin to. Yeah, uh, Quinton83 saying, don't go there. We're going to start a war here on Category 5. <laughs> Literally, a For war. For those of you with a fear of commitment, you can have both. So I'm going to take the easy way out, and I'm going to refer you to psychocats.net. And the reason I say that, because they've written an, a nice little uh, comparison, unbiased, KDE and GNOME, and it goes through a list of some of the stuff that is, is similar. Is it an alphabetically sorted list? It's not, but we could sort it later. <laughs> Stick around. Uh, but essentially, it shows some of the pluses and, my, and, and negatives of each, and expresses that basically, basically, and, and there's so many differences, but the basic difference is that KDE essentially goes more for the graphic approach to everything. Like they want to give you a menu item with 30 different ways to display that menu item. Whereas GNOME takes that simplified approach, makes things a lot sleeker as far as stripping away the, the, the cruft, if you will, like as they used to call it in, in uh, Ubuntu, uh, but stripping away the extra stuff, hiding some of the stuff that is not necessary for the end user, and, and thereby making the operating system easier to, to use because there's not a whole bunch of options. It's strictly like you, can, you, can, you, you know exactly what you're looking for in your menus, for example. So, but there, there's so much to it. So what I'll do is I'll post a link to that. It's psychocats.net slash Ubuntu slash KDE GNOME. Psychocats. Yeah. And there will be a link in the show notes for episode number uh, 172. But there it is. But they make some, uh, some good points there. And, and of course, it's not something that we would want to touch on because it would start a war. OK. But do, do feel free to mention it in the chat room what your opinion is. I'm a GNOME user, so I dare not okay. go there. And <laughs> also, further to the idea of not starting a war, mm. um, back to episode, I believe it was 170, the day I played hooky and didn't. Right. Yeah. Um, and you decided, oh, no, no, it was the, yeah, to, uh, you decided to, uh, Take note of how uh, Google's uh, voice to text yeah, yeah. was working. Did you catch that? Um, yeah. Brilliant. I, I just want to go on record. I don't know what I said, but it was translated <laughs> as anti American with that right underneath my picture. I am not anti American. Well, I, I think we addressed but, that. Well, you addressed I it think in a we big addressed, way, yes? I think we addressed the fact that <laughs> Google's speech to text is not 100% reliable. And, and, you, and you were blaming, <laughs> I thought you were blaming my mumbling, but. Uh, for those of you who didn't catch the show, episode number great. 170, we were, we were actually testing uh, YouTube's new feature. It's, it's fairly new, where they take the video and they convert it to closed captions automatically. It's speech-to-text technology from Google. Eric said, I'm Eric Kidd. And, of course, the caption came up. Anti-American. <laughs> so you can imagine that made us laugh here at the studio as we were watching that, and it, it was just an outbreak. I had a knock on the, the door later was, that night. It was oh, scary. Well, <laughs> it was frightening. Frightening. So and that's that's yes, the story there. Check it out, though. Yes. you you got to see it to believe it. Google's uh, on the right track, I think, but they are way off. And I'm going to keep saying, let's begin, too. <laughs> 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 we won't touch on that one. You'll have to watch the show to um, figure it out. Okay. <laughs> Shall we go Thanks to another question? Indeed. Moving along. All right. Well, this is a little longer one. All right. This is oh, yeah, from... Oh, hey, you're looking at... He's, he's looking at it. See, we've got the brand new website. Yeah. So this is a new format to the email. So we, you'll notice that when you fill in and ask us a question, you're actually allowed to give us the pronunciation of your name, which I thought was important. I'm going to just jump in and say, I think this is pronounced Scott Evans. Hey, Scott. But That one's an I, easy one. I could be wrong. Um, his operating system is Linux. Debian. Um, and the question. Hi, Robbie and Eric. With the recent update to the Cat5 website, how are you finding the new release of Joomla? 
And is there any particular part of the new release that will make the end user experience better as a result? These are silly questions I know, but I was hoping for you to share your thoughts about it and essentially with the viewers. Scott. And is there an attachment? No, there is not an attachment. All right. So there well, you have it. I think the, the big thing about the, the 1.5 version of Joomla is that it is more current. So it's not necessarily for the end user. It's more for the guy who has to update the website. It makes a big difference to, to have the newer version because they've really made some improvements. But that said, we say the new version of Joomla, but 1.6 is right around the corner, and that was this hard thing. It's like we're, we're, wait, we're wanting to make this deadline of January 1st, which we set like six months ago, and 1.6 is still not out, 1.6 is still not oh, out, okay. so waiting and waiting, and, and it didn't happen. So we are on 1.5, but we're keeping up to date with that. So um, essentially, it really boils down to it, it makes a big difference for the administrator of the website. Not to mention, there's, there's such a vast... Uh, huge amount of uh, applications that you can install, modules, components, and, and plugins for your Joomla website from the JED, the Joomla extension directory. So if we go there, it's just extensions.joomla.org. Pardon me. And when we get there... Too much pizza? No, it's the coffee. Oh. It makes makes me burp when I talk. Nice. <laughs> and thank you uh, for sharing. Well, you asked. I, you asked. Well, okay. We we decided to be. That was my resolution. I'd be honest with you. Oh. <laughs> you asked about it. Dear me, hanging his head, hanging his head. So the Joomla extension directory allows you to get a ton of new features for Joomla because Joomla is more than just a content management system in the traditional sense. It's more than just being able to set up categories add your articles, blog, and do this and that. It allows you to get components and more features for your Joomla website. Um, so much so that it, it expedites the process of creating an incredibly advanced website. You see our website, for example, at category5.tv. We have a lot of very cool features. And many of those would have taken way more time had I had to reinvent the wheel and program everything from scratch. Um, so what we were able to do is get a lot of the components from the Joomla extension directory from other programmers, rework them for our site, and then make something that, that functions the way that we want. So just to give you an example, you can see on the front page here, there's a couple of new and noteworthy items. There's some featured stuff, random extensions. But if we go all categories, it'll really give you an idea of how much is available for Joomla. If you see, if I scroll down through here. Looks like Kijiji. <laughs> it, it's pretty huge, right? So what is all this stuff? You zoom in, we've got e-commerce. We've got affiliate carts, auction, billing and invoices, donations, e-commerce bridges, all these categories for e-commerce. Over here, clients and communities. There's nowhere it says buy the host to Guinness, does it? No, no. You, could, you could customize okay. it. Uh, we've got all this stuff, ads and affiliate programs, right? So all these different, so you, you pick what it is that you're looking for, or you can search, of course, but let's say you know, let's say I want to do a, a, a new photo gallery, for example. We can go over here to Photos and Images, and we've got Photo Gallery. There are 80 different components to choose from, components, plugins, or modules, in the Photo Gallery uh, category. So you'll see here the first one that comes up is 4.5 out of 5 stars, 128 voters, and 82 reviews. So if you're interested in that, if the description sounds good to you, it's an image gallery plus uh, is a straightforward way to add images or photo galleries to a Joomla article. So you can click on that and you can find out more. And it has both 1.5 and 1.6. It's compatible with both, yeah. yeah. So the next thing you want to look at is the type. This one is non-commercial. That means you're not going to have to pay for it in order to use it. Uh, so you can just do a direct download of this application if you'd like to add it to your Joomla website, which is very, very nice. Uh, the Joomla community is fantastic as far as providing a lot of different components for a Joomla-based content management site. Um, and this is here's an example, right? So, so you look at some of the reviews, and it works like any other review site. And you can see what other people are saying about it. And it, when I see this, I see a lot of five out of five stars, and that's got to tell you something. And then you see the one that's a one. Okay, that's one that brought it down a little bit. Huh? It's one that brought <laughs> it down a little bit. And the first thing that they say is, "I'm fairly new to Joomla." And you read on, and you realize, okay, well, this person maybe didn't necessarily know their way around Joomla. So, you you can real you can kind of weed out what's true and what's not, and then you decide, okay, right. here's a component that sounds good. When you're installing components, you don't want to go, now I've seen this happen. 
I had a client who uh, hosted their website with, with our server and didn't have us actually create the website, so I wasn't actively maintaining it. What they had done is they had gone into Joomla extension directory, mm -hmm. downloaded a ton of cool components, and said, oh, that sounds cool, that sounds cool, that sounds cool, that sounds cool. Downloaded them all, installed them on their Joomla website, and then let the website run. And for five years, didn't update this website. Every security exploit, every update patch, oh. every, everything that went on during that time, they never maintained it. So keep in mind that you need to maintain your website, just like anything, right? If you're installing components, you need to keep on top of, is this the latest version of this component? If you have 2,000 components installed, it becomes very hard to manage. Um, so keep that in mind. KISS method is probably yeah, a good approach. Pretty much, pretty much. Keep it simple. Um, so what happened with this particular client is that their website got completely hacked because one of the components that they, that they had installed at some point two years ago came up with a, a known exploit that would allow people to, to break into your website. So it's, you've got to keep on top of that kind of stuff. And then it, had they patched it, had they upgraded to the newest version, it wouldn't have been a problem. Uh, but it was a big problem. And so uh, that ended up uh, d basically destroying their site. So, so you need to be mindful of that kind of stuff. It's very important to keep your site up to date. Um, and so don't go through Joomla extension directory thinking, oh, this sounds cool, this sounds cool, this sounds cool, download it and install it. Rather, plan out your website. Do that if it's just a test site. If you just want to play around and figure out how Joomla works, do it. Uh, but make sure you blast that website off the internet as soon as you're done playing. Uh, and then when you build an actual production site, be very selective about what you put onto that website. Read the reviews. Read what other people say about it. Uh, look at the code a little bit if you know PHP and determine how things are happening on that, uh, on that component and, uh, and figure out if it's for you. And keep it up to date. Very important. Um, so for me, with the Category 5 uh, new website, <coughs> it boils down to uh, ease of use for, for myself, which means expediting the up updates uh, on a weekly basis after every show. I do the show notes, I do the on-demand, I do the RSS feeds, I do um, the syndication partners, I do all of the the stuff that that you know that allow people to watch the show after the fact. And that way, it never becomes a huge undertaking to try and. Fix <clears throat> it, it was you. with the old site. It was a pretty big undertaking. Uh, with the new site, it's it cuts down. Probably tonight's our first night with the new site, but I'm estimating that the first couple of weeks will probably cut about an hour work off of my schedule. Nice. And possibly once I get that, you know, once I get it into a routine, new routine. We'll have you website. playing hockey with me in no time. Well, I doubt that. <laughs> There's still a lot to it, but I, I think we'll be able to shed about about two hours off of my uh, Tuesday night, nice. which is fantastic. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a long day. Mm -hmm. So, and the the quicker I can get stuff up for the viewers, possibly the more time I have to dedicate to other stuff, writing reviews, uh, looking at other products, things like that. So, so it'll be very cool. <laughs> Slip 3D saying, Ah, Robbie's just getting lazy. Old. <laughs> oh. Thanks. My guitar's older than you. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I had somebody <laughs> come into the office today and and call a CRT television, which is what I have. I've got a 27-inch deep CRT old-style television. When she was referring to CRT TV, she called it old-fashioned. You know the old-fashioned kind of TV? Yeah. Well, <laughs> How many people are still using a CRT and don't have a flat screen? Love to hear from you. And we will start a little posse and we'll hang out. <laughs> <laughs> they do take up a lot of real estate. They do. Those cathode ray tubes. Yes, okay. Okay. Well, we have another question. And this one is also from the news site. And this is from Robert Taylor. Hey, no Robert. help with the pronunciation. I figured that out all you my own. That one out Again? Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, uh, Robert's uh, operating system is Ubuntu Maverick. Hmm. Okay, so the question, what system slash programs do you use to produce the show? Hmm. I'm interested in making video podcast live stream show and am interested in what you use and how you do it. Maybe do a behind the scenes episode. It's funny you would say that <laughs> because we are uh, we're actually working on uh, on a behind the scenes 
episode of Category 5. Very cool. Uh, to Basically, to summarize it, Robert, just, just to answer your question without going too far into answering your question, because uh, we know that we are doing a show on how, how the show operates and, and how you can broadcast on the Internet, um, do check out cat5.tv slash wirecast, just as it sounds, cat5.tv slash w-i-r-c-a-s-t. And from there, you'll be able to see the software that we use to make it all happen. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, especially uh, as of late, is do we use like a hardware device that makes all this possible to do the camera switching? And when, we, when we're able to you know, pull up the computer display or put uh, footer graphics, put our names, things like that, and uh, all the different things that we do, even the live green screen, the chroma key, chroma key mm -hmm. effects, uh, do we have to have a twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollar piece of hardware in order to do that. And truth is, we're just using a standard PC. It's a quad core Intel uh, computer, and it runs that Wirecast software from Telestream. Uh, so again, you can check that out: cat5.tv/wirecast. But do uh, do make sure that you you watch for an upcoming episode where we are going to be showing you in depth how that works. You could also uh, consider try uh, checking out our Halloween special this year. It was a little bit fun. Scary stuff, kids. It was, it was pretty scary with, with the Star Trek effects and oh. stuff like that in the green screen. But at the end of the episode, I actually demonstrate how Wirecast works with Chroma Key. And uh, you'll be able to see a little bit about how Wirecast works uh, during that little bit of a demonstration. Um, so it would, be, it would be worth you checking that out. Quentin83 is asking, does Wirecast work on Linux? <coughs> Pardon me. Wow. That was random. Yep. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that probably helped. Does uh, Wirecast work on Linux? And it does Shout not. Oh, sorry. It doesn't. It is a Windows or Mac application, and you know I'm not I'm not the programmer, so I don't know the the ins and outs of that. But it has to do with the way that they work with their capture cards and the devices and things like that. Um, but unfortunately, it is Windows or Mac only. So, uh, but it is fantastic, and and certainly if you're going to be getting into broadcasting, like that's something that we ran into at one point where we said. Are we going to try to figure out how to do it on Linux because we want to try to stay as open source as possible, or do we just, you know, install one Windows system, have that run our stream so that you know all the cameras can be connected into that? And that's the decision that we made because there is uh, software like Wirecast available for Windows. Uh, so, yeah, it is a shame, uh, Quentin, but um, but that's that's just the nature of you know. Sometimes that's the way it is. It's like it's the same thing as uh, Planet Calypso. It's like it only runs on Windows. Mm -hmm. So I dual boot for it, and it's worth the dual boot. And hey. I say that in the promo. I even say that in the promo, people. So it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are, uh, well, Troy74 saying that uh, they're from the Stone Age. I've got a CRT. Uh, it's actually 14 inches. So oh. it's 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 not only huge, but it's also small, at the same time. We've got uh, Raptor 222. One out of two of the TD TVs is CRT. Well, that disqualifies you because that means one of them is flat. <laughs> what are you writing down? Nothing. Why don't you just say it? <laughs> I'm not doing that. And okay, so we've got uh, we've got a handful of people that uh, that are using CRT still. I think that's going to, unfortunately, it's going to quickly come to a halt. Because it's, it, what, what's happening, we took our CRT th that died in the bedroom and, and took it to the, uh, to the repair shop, and they wouldn't fix it. They wouldn't fix it, wow. literally. Fortunately, we have... Well, it's like we, we try to get the most life out of it. I would rather pay to get something fixed, if I can, than replace it. Um, so we ended up, fortunately, we have e-waste recyclers here in Barrie, and you probably have them uh, at home as well. Uh, just look look in the, I don't know if you got yellow pages or however it works, but uh, look up e-waste recyclers, and maybe somebody will be able to take your old stuff. But because the repair shops are starting to refuse them, saying, you know, we're not going to fix it, parts are not readily available for them anymore, things like that, of course, as soon as that CRT goes, we're going to have to replace it. So, not long now. Not long. No. That old 27 inch is going to say, no, nah, no. And for work. goodness sakes, don't touch any of the parts inside unless you bleed the power off wow. to ground. That is some high voltage equipment, <laughs> oh. my friends. Oh, indeed. 
I, I learned that the hard way, by the way. No. Yes. Oh, oh. Didn't affect you one bit. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, here's another name I can pronounce. Great. Greg. Hey, Greg. And uh, his OS is Ubuntu. Good choice. Hi, Robbie and Eric. Have you used Microsoft Security Essentials? HTTP colon slash sure. www Microsoft Secure. Yeah. Okay. If so, what's your opinion and would you recommend using it over conventional antivirus software? That was the end of the question, Robbie. Well, it's just that Greg said he was on Ubuntu. And he's asking us about Microsoft Security okay. Essentials and can I recommend it? Not for you, my friend. <laughs> Microsoft Security Essentials is. I'm their, not even sure he's your friend anymore. He's oh, sorry. <laughs> That's their uh, their free uh, version of antivirus and security suite kind of thing uh, from Microsoft. And I would say of the free solutions that are out there, it's it's a good solution to you know for somebody who can't necessarily you know afford the the annual fee of a, an antivirus because there is that renewal. But if you can get if you can get commercial antivirus, then something like Nod32 is going to be a better way to go. It's going to be more effective. But Security Essentials is proving itself to be reasonably effective. It's it's one of the, it's probably the best or one of the best of the free antivirus solutions. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely worth trying. But um, like I say, there's there's that line of you know the free stuff, and then you get into the better stuff that is commercially. Uh, Supported software like ESETS and Nod32. Um, of course, there are some paid-for antivirus suites that I find. There are some other ones than, that I'm not less mentioning. Less than a joy to de deal yeah, with. Yeah, I'm not saying that all the ones that you pay for work. No. And that's why I'm not mentioning other no some other ones. And they're like, oh, but there's two that I can think of right now that are really big, and I'm not mentioning them. Sometimes what you find on the retail shelves is not necessarily the best either, uh, because the retailers have relationships with. Uh, the software developers and and so you know what, if you you're walk in, there's a little quid pro quo going on there in the retail there market. Sure is. Come on, yeah. and Microsoft's product, in oh, fact, you cynic. Microsoft's product is in fact a, a result of uh, legal action taken against them for the security exploits in their operating systems. So oh, did not know that. it's them having to say, okay, well, we're going to have to provide a solution to this for our users, um, and it's it's kind of the the better of the free. So. Okay, so <laughs> I'm watching the chat room. I see you, Agamotto. I can't say it, but I, I agree. <laughs> Got to be careful. Yes, yeah, so it would be hard to disagree with uh, yes. Agamotto at this point yeah. in the proceedings. Well, I think uh, Hillary is uh, is looking to uh, tell us all about what's going on in the world of technology from Category 5.tv slash newsroom. And, of course, uh, you can check out the newsroom website. We have an RSS feed if you want to uh, get the... Uh, the text syndication, so you can actually read the news uh, when it's when it is released, and uh, our newsroom actually weeds out uh, the good from the bad news, so you don't end up with a bunch of stuff that is kind of irrelevant. Oh, okay. You know the news sites that it's just like millions and millions of things about nothing. Oh, I thought you were only telling good news, no bad. We news. well, we try to we There's try a lot to of bad news in the world. We sift through and and say, you know, here, this is yeah. this is relevant to our viewers. Well, we try to make it relevant anyway, so. Uh, anyways, that said, without further ado, Hillary? Thanks, Robbie. Hey. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, Wikipedia founder Jimmy Wales announced this week that the Wikimedia Foundation met its $16 million fundraising goal. Donations to the Wikimedia Foundation will fund various needs of the Wikipedia website, including servers, bandwidth, development, and maintenance. Donations will also help support the 50 or so employees of this nonprofit group. Wales notes this fundraiser had all the ingredients of what we love about Wikimedia projects. People come together, contribute what they have, and together do something amazing. The Wikimedia Foundation received more than 500,000 donations with an average amount of about uh, 22 US dollars. A glitch on Apple's iPhone had stopped its built-in alarm clock from going off, leaving many people oversleeping on the first two days of 2011. Angry bloggers and tweeters complained that they had been late for worse and, were wis and they risked uh, missing planes and trains because of it. Apple acknowledged the problem promptly, revealing that it would self-resolve on the 3rd. BBC technology reporter Jonathan Fidel... Uh, 
Fildes, Fildes says the promise, problem is embarrassing for Apple, not only because of the previous problems that came to light when the clocks changed, but because the company prides itself on the simplicity of use of its products. In response to Apple's fans telling people not to overreact to the alarm clock issue, blogger Nick Farrell writes on the Inquirer.net, maybe Steve Jobs is right after all. Apple doesn't have to be competent, it just has to be cool. IKEA is no longer stocking or selling incandescent light bulbs in its U.S. stores and is instead offering the longer-lasting energy-efficient bulbs only. IKEA's action comes ahead of federal legislation that would mandate more efficient light bulbs starting in 2012. The pullout also applies to IKEA stores in Canada. Stores in France and Australia started phasing out the incandescent bulbs last year, though. U.S. IKEA President Mike Ward said in a statement this morning, eliminating incandescence is just one simple way for IKEA customers to reduce energy consumption and greenhouse gases. One of the best meteor showers of the year will peak on Monday night with the quad ranted, quad ranted, yes, possibly producing as many as 100 per hour. The actual number of meteors visible will vary with the observer's location, time, and background light making dark rural areas the best viewing option. The peak will be sometime between 8 p.m. Eastern Time and 2 a.m., according to media reports, although the best viewing times will differ uh, greatly among the experts. Uh, it will get darker sooner in eastern Canada, so early viewing will be better. But in western Canada, even a clear sky won't help for early viewers because daylight will make the meteors invisible at that time. Uh, Quadranted meteors will appear to start from the Big Dipper's handle, but will streak across the entire sky. You can get these full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor or mention, send us an email at newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Planet Calypso. This massive multiplayer online game is available as a free download from cat5.tv slash Calypso. Now once you've got it downloaded and installed on your Windows computer, make sure you say hi. And there's something for everyone here on Planet Calypso, from hunting to mining, crafting, and just plain socializing and having fun with your friends. You can download it for free at cat5.tv slash Calypso. If you're a Linux user like myself, of course, this makes it worth the dual boot. Cat5.tv slash Calypso. I'll see you on Planet Calypso. <laughs> Raptor 222 is my hero. Thanks, bud. Wow. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. Nice to see you. And uh, we've got... <laughs> and again, that's Robbie Ferguson, and yeah. I'm Eric Kidd. There we go. There you go. Thanks, Thank Raptor. You. Thanks, everybody. Chat room is fantastic. Hey, I want to look at I Miro. On, yeah, Miro Internet TV is a fantastic application. You can pick it up online at getmiro.com. And it is installable on Linux, Windows, or Mac. And of course, you'll see that it has installers for many different flavors of Linux, and the source is also available, being that it is uh, free open source software. I'm going to jump over to my computer here, and you'll see that I've actually already installed it on Ubuntu using Synaptic Package Manager, just going for uh, with uh, just typing in Miro, M I R O, is all I type. And you'll see that on my sound and video menu now. I have Miro Internet TV. So once you've got that installed, one of the first things that you want to do is get onto our new website, category5.tv, and you'll see that if you click on Watch the Show and then RSS Feeds, this is going to take you to a link that allows you to, well, with an RSS feed, you can actually syndicate our show to your computer. So that can be through your uh, portable media device if you want to be able to get the latest episode every day, uh, every week. 
uh, things like that. But in this case, with Miro Internet TV, you can use it to syndicate the, uh, the show to your Miro Internet TV system. So on this web page, you can click on Subscribe with Miro, and that's going to ask you what you want to do. Do you want to open it with? And it's going to give you Miro as the option because I've got Miro installed. So you'll see as this page loads, there it goes. What do you want to do to open this .miro file? I'm going to open it with Miro Internet TV, which of course you can say, do this automatically for files like this from now on. And anytime you click on a Miro link, it will automatically uh, subscribe you using Miro. So now that I've clicked that, it's going to bring up Miro Internet TV for me. And you'll see that now it is subscribing to Category 5 TV. And there we have it. So we've got episode 171 is last week's episode, and it is there. There it is. So that's going to automatically start downloading the latest episode. And look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, it's chat room is work how, debugging uh, everything. It is helping out here in, in this Thanks, particular Kang. case. Anyway. And Gadwill, I said I'd say hey, so there. <laughs> Back to Miro here. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. So the, uh, what that allows us to do now is, is it's going to syndicate every episode that is released of Category 5 TV to your computer in such a way that it downloads the HD feed. So you're getting the, the best quality of Category 5 TV right to your computer. You can then copy those over to your, MP3, uh, your uh, MP4 player if you've got something like that. Uh, you can use iTunes if you want to uh, synchronize it to an iPod or, or something along those lines. Uh, you can, of course, you know, place those files on any number of devices, including your Android phones and things like that. So here, you've got a, a one-stop uh, shop to get a lot of your favorite uh, internet-based TV programs. So that said, so now I've got Category 5 here. And these ones, just before the show, I've set them up to automatically download. Uh, these ones are a little bit older. So let's say I want to watch this show here. I can click Play. And I've already started it here, but you'll see that it actually loads instantly. It gets the, high, uh, the highest definition version of the video and allows us to play that using Miro Internet TV. It's really a fantastic app application. So then taking it one step further is how can we get other shows as well? Uh, how can we get more content on our Miro Internet TV? Um, so what we want to do is up here at the top, you'll see that there is the Miro Guide, which is a fantastic resource of all different types of shows. You'll see from genres, for example, you can choose technology. And from within the technology genre, and of course there's so much different stuff. There's you've, Linux you've, and free software. Yeah, there, you've got to yeah. check it out. There's uh, actually a category for Linux and free software. There's, there are categories for uh, everything from food, like learning to cook, watching your, your favorite food sh uh, shows, um, being able to, I don't know, even like things like... Uh, like nature channels and things yeah. like that. Those are all here. So now that I've clicked on technology, you'll see this great big long list that keeps growing. You see that loader at the very bottom. And this list, as I scroll, is going to give me access to all these different shows. So if you find one that you like or that interests, interests you, and they all have ratings. So let's say I want to get uh, TED Talks or Linux Journal. So here's the Linux Journal. You can click on it and find out more. You can subscribe to it. There's more details to find out more about, uh, about Sean's show. You can see some of the episodes here. You can click to watch. But then if you're happy with it, you can go, OK, I want to add this feed to my sidebar. And you'll see that now Linux Journal is already loading here instantly. And once that loads, I'm going to have access to all of Sean's videos. <coughs> and again, these are going to be giving us the highest possible quality of each and every show that we are subscribed to. Very so nice. if you've got, uh, let's say you've got HDMI going out from your computer to your, <coughs> to your flat screen fancy pants TV, <laughs> then uh, you'll really enjoy the, the feature set of Miro Internet TV. Again, it's available. <laughs> now what about closed captioning? It's oh. all there. It's all there. It's fantastic. Um, it, it is available uh, from getmiro.com. And uh, it's a free download. You can also get it from Synaptic Package Manager or from Yum or from apt-get. Just look for Miro, M-I-R-O. Cool stuff? Cool stuff. Yeah. 
All this right. is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. Love to have you join us on the new website this week. Uh, we've got lots going on. You look like you've got... Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, talking about joining us on the new website, yeah. we've got some newly registered viewers. We've got D-Man 810. Hey. Hey, D-Man. And Re... Or is that R.E. Johnstone? Or Johnson? United Kingdom. And Michael. We have Farmer and Desiris from Ridgeport, USA. Albert Poor, T Money sixty eight, and New to Linux. Dot twenty eleven. So there you go. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Welcome to Category Five. You can get registered on our new website as these uh, people have uh, discovered. You can go on to Category Five TV, and when you're there, register for the site. And you're going to be able to participate in all this great new stuff on our brand new website, including we've got what's called the Category 5.TV Viewer Points. And with those viewer points, you're going to be able to, we've talked about them in the past, you can redeem them uh, for a variety of different things. And even you can go into the forum, and if you have a question for somebody, you can ask your questions in the forum. Somebody else can go in, and they can help you out. They can answer your questions for you uh, with regards to technology or anything at all. There's general chat as well. And if you, uh, if you appreciate uh, the person's uh, response to your question, you can push, push the thank you button, and then that transfers some of your viewer points over to that user as a way of saying thank you. Oh. So there's all these neat new ways to, uh, to participate in the, in the show, uh, and the site has so many great new features. I'd like to point out a couple, of, uh, a couple of the new features. One of them is the fact that we have our new viewer testimonials. You can go to viewer testimonials and see what others say on the interact menu. And on this menu, you'll see here's the new testimonial system. And there are actually video testimonials. So if you would care to record a video of yourself with your webcam or however, if you've got a digital video camera, you can do that as well. Yeah. You can upload a video testimonial. Kind of nice can, to have a visual on yeah. our viewers. Uh, and our viewers will be able to see that yeah. on our website, category5.tv. And on occasion, we may even, you know, come to an anniversary show or something like that. We may take some of those video testimonials and put together uh, a montage of, of viewers uh, talking about what they love about the show. Um, so there, there's a lot of exciting things surrounding kind of the community yeah. involvement of Category 5 now. Uh, and that's really what we're working towards. So do you see maybe um, creating a more of a text version of this uh, for uh, folks on dial-up who <laughs> or, or it is pretty feature rich you'll yeah. notice that it's it's pretty heavy and and action-packed and exciting yeah. and that's yeah. and that's the intention and that's our goal is to really push towards those uh, the high-speed end of things what about the blackberry people are you gonna yeah all that's mobile all that's in place yeah okay. um, so we're actually working towards now you'll notice if you one of the key things is that uh, like things like iPhone uh, don't support flash right mm -hmm. so it's in place that if you're using an iPhone or an iPad or an iPod touch or something along those lines you're actually going to receive the h.264 automatically so if you click on watch the show rather than getting a flash player it's going to automatically roll you over to the h.264 so you're going to be able to view it as well so there's development going on in not just the, the core website, so what you see here, uh, but there is also the mobile end of things being developed, which is already in place and, and growing and, and getting better, getting faster. And with the mobile end of things comes making the site lighter weight. Mm -hmm. So then for those users who say, oh, well, I'm, this, this new website is really too heavy for my old system, there will be a way very, very soon, within the next couple of weeks, uh, for you to actually change this, the theme of the website to strip away some of those really advanced things that are possibly bogging down some older computers. Uh, but for the most part, I think most users are going to find that the experience is quite, quite good. Um, but if you do have trouble, do, of course, uh, don't lose hope because we are working towards uh, that inevitability of having a, a version of the site that is lighter weight for, for users who are using older, older hardware. So beyond that, we, <coughs> pardon me, I've got this nasty cough today. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> That's what the compressor's for. I've got the, uh, we've got the RSS feeds, which we already took a brief look at. If you use an RSS aggregator, which means that you're able to download these, uh, the show using an RSS file, you'll know what that means if you have it. There are different types of video and audio available. If you want to get just the MP3 audio, there's that. 
And of course, there are the text feeds for both the newsroom and the community forum. So if you want to be able to get the updates on the forum itself, find out if somebody has responded to your questions and things like that, right. you can do so through the RSS feed and get that text updating onto your system. And you can also, we looked at, uh, we looked at recently Zimbra Desktop, for example. Mm -hmm. Using Zimbra Desktop or similar applications to that, you can actually subscribe to these text RSS feeds. So say the forum, for example, uh, using Zimbra Desktop and it will show up as another folder in your inbox. So when you click on that, it actually looks like each forum thread is an email to you. And you can click on it and you can read the forum that way. So there, there's a lot of different ways that you can view the website and it's, it's pretty exciting that way. The new forum, one of the main things that we want to do with the new website is improve social interaction with our viewers. Uh, you'll see that Twitter, uh, Twitter is heavily integrated into the site. And our new forum is is very heavy with uh, we're really trying to push towards um, a lot of user interaction with the new forum. It's greatly improved over the old forums. Uh, we found that forum was just really really hard to work with. So beyond that, we've got a bio from Mr. Eric Kidd. Hi, kids. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about Eric, you'll be able to get that on the About Us page. Where did you get that? Oh, I know where you got that picture. I know where you got that. <laughs> You'll notice as well if you're if you're looking at the new website that we've got a viewer map, which is basically mapping out where our viewers are currently watching the show from. And I find this really quite intriguing to see that. Hey, okay, that's the studio right there. That is the Just studio below Georgian Bay and above. So we're we're live on the air right now, and you see all the orange dots. So you can see where the show is being watched. What are the ones with the the ones, that are, the ones that are flashing are people who are clicking on the website right now. Oh. So they're possibly looking at the website at this moment. Um, and you can see that there are people from all over the place, places that I never even heard of. And I'm, I'm looking some of this stuff up just to see where, the, where everybody's from. Yeah, there are people out in the ocean. Somebody's in a boat. Well, it could be a small island. <laughs> So th there's a lot of neat features on the web <laughs> website. When you're logged in, you can find out uh, what's going on with the viewer points yeah. and how, uh, you know, how people are using their viewer points. You can see uh, who is uh, most active on the website. And, and we're hoping that that will also raise some competitiveness among viewers as well so that uh, you'll really want to become involved in the show. And as such, you'll be, you'll, we'll be presenting awards and things like that. And, uh, and you notice that we're actually wearing some new shirts today. You were yeah. mentioning off the top of the show that, uh, that we have these new uniforms. And John's got his, and we've got one for Hillary as well. Um, you're making a lot of noise over I'm there. I'm having a little trouble with my microphone staying put here. There we go. There. There. You can hear me now? We can hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, just a little bit of an announcement for you. Pogo Plug, as gracious as they are, has sent me this. And I got a T-shirt. Oh. <laughs> and, they, and they said as they sent this to me that we've, we've got to give this to the viewers of Category 5 TV. So we're going to give away this. Very nice. And we're going to give away another one. And we're going to give away another one. And we're going to keep doing that for the entire year, for all of 2011. We're giving away a dozen? More than a dozen. More than Let's a dozen. just say more than a dozen. And so, I would just encourage you to register on our website. You do have to be a registered viewer on our website, category5.tv. It's free. And you'll get all the cool features that I'm showing you there. And of course, we do have those pogo plugs to give away as well. Uh, I'm very, very excited about that. Greg in Texas wants one. <laughs> of course, now. Of course he does. I've got a map right here that shows me everyone who wants one. All right. So I, under I understand how that goes. Oh, and that, that dot we were wondering about, that's the island of Curacao, Thank next you. to Aruba. Did, okay. I, did I say Curacao correctly? Somebody's going to tell me pretty soon, I'm sure. G-Dog, there is a feature on our website, category5.tv, to allow you to change your password if you're stuck using a temporary password. Uh, and thanks again to uh, Gadwill and the entire Beta team, uh, Andrew Jameson, and everybody who's been involved in the Beta team for uh, helping <laughs> for helping along uh, the the process of developing this website. It's been an exciting time. Um, <laughs> Gadwill 
uh, actually stayed up and and sat and and helped me through everything that uh, that we were working on uh, for New Year's Day's launch. So wow. that was that was quite a commitment on uh, on Gadwill's part, and I appreciate that very much. So, and uh, beyond that, of course, you see on the website, do look around. We've improved greatly the show notes pages. Uh, really, just improved the. Uh, the way that you find what it is you're looking for. The old site was feeling really hard to find what you're looking for. Now it's extremely easy. Everything's in in, in a very well organized format and it's going to continue to be that way. We've des designed this website to be expandable, to be able to grow to the point where it's a, a huge website as it is, but it's not going to it's not going to be hard to find what you're looking for in the future. So Thank you to everybody for your support through the uh, development phase. And of course, if you'd like to donate to the show uh, to help uh, offset costs and, and everything that's involved in that, uh, you can do that off the website as well. And we do appreciate that, but we do not by any means require that. Uh, but it always helps very, very much. So thanks, everybody. I'm sure we've got a couple of questions to go. I would like to look at uh, sorting our lists, because I know that. Uh, All right. But let's, let's hit one question before we get into that. Um. Well, we have Dennis Kelly, and it's pronounced hey Dennis. Dennis Kelly. Great, thank you. Um, thanks for that. Um, about the website, uh, he has not received his confirmation email to log into the oh. website. Okay, if that happens, so you've you've gone to subscribe to the website, Dennis, and not seemingly received your confirmation email. Apparently so, not. Uh, the first thing I would do is check your junk filter, your your spam filters, and also just double check that you had um, entered your email address correctly as well. If, now I, I will look this up after the show for you, all right, Dennis, just to be sure that, you know, if, if it's something that's that's up. But I do believe, you know, because we've received so many registrations this this uh, past week since we launched the site since Saturday, um, that, that the system is functional. Working, yeah. yeah, so there might be something there where maybe your spam filters have picked it up, maybe uh, something like that has happened. So. Uh, so double check that and uh, and let me know. But in the meantime, I'll double check as well just to make sure that it did it did go out and that your email address was entered correctly. Okay. You got another one? All right, we have another one. And if you have a question for us, it's live <coughs> at category five TV to email us here in the studio, or of course you can get us uh, in the chat room category five TV. All right, and this one is from John S. Hey John. And uh, he's using Windows Seven. Hi Robbie and Eric. Thanks for trying to answer the KVM switch problem. None of them worked. What? And Omega or cables to go, expensive, refused to function. Even their tech support couldn't help. Next venture is Synergy software. Supposed to work, we will see. Synergy is the opposite of a KVM. Yeah. KVM is one monitor, one keyboard, one mouse. Oh wait, no, I guess it's, yeah, no, it is, it is the opposite except like as far as the monitor goes because you're looking at two yeah. monitors. Synergy has two monitors for two computers, but only one keyboard and mouse. Oh. So it's a little bit different. But that's very weird. And did try Kavoom software based. Didn't work either. I'd be so curious about your setup as to why a KVM switch wouldn't work, because a KVM is a hardware based solution. So there's no, there wouldn't be any explanation as long as you've got it set up correctly that, uh, for it not to work. That's yeah. just a strange thing. Unless he's going with just too much distance and needs an extender as well. But I don't know. If it's mm -hmm. just a setup underneath his desk with a couple of computers. Shouldn't, shouldn't have any trouble setting that up. But that's very odd. But, so what Synergy does differently is that you've got the two monitors. Okay. Um, actually, I'll, I'll give you a quick little tour here just so that you understand. So here's our broadcast system. Okay. So this is monitor number one. And here's my laptop, which is monitor number two. All right. So two systems, one mouse. Here's my mouse. You can see the cursor. I'll put it over gold wave so that you can really see that cursor. Now with Synergy, okay. Sorry for the non-steady cam. With Synergy, I'm going to take this mouse cursor, take it over here, and you'll see that it moves onto. This is my laptop. Okay. You have a nice reflection in your laptop. I do. <laughs> See that mouse cursor? There it is. Okay. And there is Wirecast, which I'm about to click on the camera. And there we go. So <clears throat> Synergy is different in that you have the two monitors. 
but you don't have the two keyboard and mouse necessarily. And of course, my laptop has a keyboard and mouse built in, but I don't use those. I use this one keyboard and one mouse. But you do need the two monitors. KVM is one monitor as well. So it's a little bit different, but maybe Synergy will work for you. But that's kind of the base difference. Synergy, of course, is a software-based solution and can be sometimes problematic to set up. I find that you do need to have a reasonably fast network, reliable connection between all your computers. Otherwise, you're going to be dragging your mouse over to the computer that's, that's a guest. This could be really jerky. When I used to run this laptop off of Wi-Fi, for example, I had a lot of trouble uh, when I would move my mouse over to that screen. So now I'm hardwired, mm -hmm. and that's resolved the problem. So keep that kind of stuff in mind, because it is a different uh, kind of setup. So the hardware is actually shared through software. It's quite good. It's interesting. And, it, and you'll notice as well that what is interesting about this setup is that the broadcast system is Windows. The laptop, of course, is Ubuntu Linux. It could also, you could also then extend it onto a third computer, which could be Mac or another Windows box or another Linux box. And you can have monitors all around you. With that really is synergy. That is synergy. They work together very, very well. It's a great piece of software. I'll post a link for you in the show notes of episode number 172. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. I'm going to take a look at a really cool website service called sortmylist.com. Now, this is one of those things kind of like um, down for everyone or just me.com. It's just one of those things that you just you got to have this in the back of your knowledge so that when you need it, you can just pull it up. It's so easy to use. It's so helpful. It's so handy. And it's, it's here. It's free and it's available for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this random list that I've created on my desktop, which is filled with random words, brain mist leather jacket. You want me to keep going? No. Clock, kitchen, television, sandpaper, spoon, feather. Okay. It's a mess. My list is a mess. I've copied that to my clipboard, and I'm pasting it in here. Now, I'm using a, a random list of words. This could be a list of your customer database that you want to sort alphabetically. This could be your albums, your, your anything at all. Your it could, albums, yeah. yeah. It's not always appropriate to, you know, that your software may not have an appropriate means of sorting this particular list. Could be anything. So when you need to sort it, so I've pasted that in. Now up here at sort, I'm going to click on A to Z. And you'll see that or Z if you're in Canada or the United Kingdom. Instantly, it's alphabetized that. Okay? Now, beyond that, we could take it one step further and we could say, you know what, I don't just want it alphabetized. I would like to create a comma separated value file. So I'm going to go separate by character, and I'm going to change this pipe character to a comma. And you'll see that it's not only alphabetized, but it's also comma separated everything in my list. So now I can control A, control C, go back to my original list, which is a mess, and paste. And I've got this great big list that is alphabetized the way that I've asked it to be, comma separated. And it's you saw how long that took. It was so you easy. You could import that into something? Anything at all. You could save that as a CSV and open it into Excel, for example, mm -hmm. or uh, Open Office Calc. You could go tab separated, and instantly it changes it to tab separated, removing the commas automatically. This, in my example, I'm using a list that is separated by new lines. Sometimes you get a list where it's like, oh, I can't possibly sort this. It's a long list. Um, there's this weird character that's separating all the lines. How do I possibly alphabetize and then uh, break it up in a way that would work? And you can see that you can actually specify what the items are specified by or are separated by. So you could say that it's a blank line. In my case, it's a new line. Or perhaps you know they're separated by a colon, and so everywhere that a colon occurs, I want to separate it. So the, it's it's very very uh, robust as far as the feature set. That's sortmylist.com, and you'll definitely want to check that out uh, anytime. Like keep that in the back of your head, and uh, anytime you need to, yeah, just keep it back there. Anytime you need to sort anything that is textual data, cool. There's your way to do it. Hey, thanks for being with us this week on Category Five TV. Make sure you register on our website for your bonus 100 viewer points. Uh, of course, those who uh, were with us before we went down for lockdown uh, received their 150 viewer points. And anyone who registers Ooh. for the month of January 
uh, it's going to also receive uh, 100 bonus viewer points. So we'd encourage you to get registered this month. Uh, after that, your chance to get those free viewer points is uh, going to be gone. Yes. Mm. Have a fantastic week, everybody. Yes, indeed. All See right. you next week, Greg. Cheers, buddy. Have a good Thank one. John. See ya. See you, Hillary. Bye-bye.